The water-powered engine is a great idea. It's just too bad it's impossible. The concept itself is simple. By running a current through water, we can split the molecules into a gas mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. These gases together act as a fuel that can combust and release large amounts of energy. Then the waste of this combustion is the exact same amount of water that we started out with, meaning the engine can fill itself up again and continue running. That's the idea at least, but if you remember middle school physics, energy and mass cannot be created nor destroyed. Input equals output. If we take a step back and look at the cycle, we can see that there's not really a way to make a water-powered engine work. No matter is being created or destroyed, so all the energy from the combustion has to come from the energy it takes to split the water molecules. Now, I did a video a couple years back that went into more detail about this, but little did I know, this video would open up a floodgate of comments all saying the same thing. You're wrong, there was actually a guy who made a water-powered engine, but the government killed him to protect the oil industry. So I looked into the man in question, Stanley Myers, and I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it, this guy was a con artist. He claimed he could split water using less energy by hitting it with a resonance frequency, breaking the molecules the same way the right frequency can break glass. But this has been shown to be garbage science, actually taking more energy than regular electrolysis. His science was debunked by experts, and his company was already going downhill, not from the government, but because his own investors sued him for fraud and for stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from them. These were the same people who believed in Stanley and his water-powered car to begin with. And as for the killed by the government to stop him thing, Stanley's official diagnosis was that he died of an aneurysm, which has similar symptoms to poisoning, such as vomiting, headaches, and blurred vision. So while Stanley and his supporters might have thought he was being poisoned, it was just a natural death to a man who already had high blood pressure. Now, Stanley might have been a fraud, but the comments about him just kept pouring in. There's a surprising number of people that believe that there's a way to make a working water-powered engine that there's some way to minimize that input energy to get all the benefit from the combustion, despite the laws of physics saying that's not how it works. And it got to the point where I just had to dig deeper into this. And to understand why this conspiracy is so popular, let's start with Stanley Myers. There are countless people who have claimed they built a working water engine, even before Stanley. So why did he become so popular and accepted? Well, despite never going to college, Stanley Myers was involved with NASA, where he helped work on the Gemini space program. Plus, he worked at a research and development firm dedicated to solutions that would better humanity. This background gave Stanley Myers credibility to his water engine claim. Because, let's be honest, if a NASA scientist slash humanitarian walks up to you and tells you that something is possible, you're at least going to listen to them. This unique background is how Stanley Myers earned the trust of his investors and secured funding for his water-powered car. And look, there is nothing wrong with trying to develop a water-powered car. But the moment Stanley crossed the line was when he faked a working water car to try and get investors to buy into his project. Even if we assume Stanley had the best of intentions and wanted to get the money because he truly believed his invention could work, he still lied to investors and stole their money to do it. And you'd think that'd be the end of it. But what made the conspiracy around Stanley Myers spread like fire was the media. The news loved this man. Stanley was interviewed and hailed as the man who was going to save the economy and topple the oil and gas industry. He had a water-powered car he claimed worked, he drove it on TV, and always talked about how it was coming to the market very, very soon. And when Stanley was convicted of fraud and theft, the news mostly turned a blind eye to that. Because let's be honest, saying water isn't fuel is a lot less newsworthy than saying water is fuel. But you know what did make an interesting headline? A man who was killed for learning something he shouldn't have. This article here makes no claims about the facts, but instead asks the reader a question that points them into thinking yeah, maybe the government did kill him. And here's the thing. This conspiracy is still growing in popularity. For better or worse, the internet is great for sharing ideas. And a water-powered engine is very tempting to want to believe in. Fossil fuel companies are basically allowed to destroy the earth, and governments let them get away with it. It's honestly a frustrating position to be in as a person who wants to see some positive change, and for the people in charge to not care about it. The water-powered engine looks like it's so close to being possible. If you don't look at it in terms of input and output energy, it looks like all you have to do is find a more efficient way of splitting up water, and then the world's problems are immediately solved. Believing a water-powered engine is possible means you have some power over the oil and gas industry. You can point your finger at these companies and say, I know how fragile you really are. And that's why I think the water-powered engine conspiracy is going to keep growing. Climate change is an escalating problem, and the fossil fuel industry just keeps going strong. More and more people are going to want a solution to turn to and believe in, and the water-powered engine is such an easy trap to fall down. And still, the media is helping to spread the conspiracy. 
Hello everyone, this is your Daily Dose of Internet. I found a YouTuber that made a step-by-step -step process showing how anyone can make their own engine that runs on water. Daily Dose of Internet is a channel with millions of subscribers and an audience that expects to be entertained while learning something new. And a water-powered engine was presented as a fact in a very recent video. This clip that Daily Dose of Internet showed is from the channel Hidden Technology. And their video is sketchy at best. They start their water-powered engine video by lending credit to Stanley Myers and the story of how he mysteriously disappeared. They also claim that the secret to making this water-powered engine work is an unnamed powder that helps split the water. The powder is so top secret and patented by the oil industry, and that's why they can't tell you what it is or sell their water engine design. It's the perfect excuse that also feeds into the anger towards the oil industry. Just looking at this video with conservation of energy in mind, at best, this mysterious powder has chemical energy stored inside of it, and that's what's splitting the water. The energy running the motor isn't coming from the water itself, it's coming from the chemical energy in the powder. But that's not what's being presented in the video. We're told that the power running this motor is coming from the water, and that the powder is just an aid. And that kind of misdirection leads me to think that this is just a scam video that's fueling this conspiracy. But it's still being presented and shared as a fact. And it looks like these videos from Hidden Technology and Daily Dose of Internet have piqued a new interest in water-powered engines. What's going to happen from here? I'm not sure. All I hope is that a video like this will help to spread some awareness about this growing conspiracy and emphasize that all the stories claiming that there's a working water-powered engine are fake. Yes, it would be amazing if we had a single solution that could fix every problem in the world. But that's not how it's going to work. It takes a bunch of smaller solutions to make any sort of progress. It's like the saying goes, if it's too good to be true, then it usually is.